thank you for attending our podcast today, or I should say video webinar. Uh, my name is Aaron Fritz with Inertia Legal, uh, and I have the honor of inter interviewing and connecting with one of my favorite uh, leaders in legal technology, Ray Zwiefelhofer from WorldDocs. Uh, Ray has, has been the, the president of WorldDocs, uh, let's see, going back to 2009, right? Is that correct? Um, so yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, I started consulting with World Software 2008 in December and officially took the position in April of 2009. It's been a while. Yeah, absolutely. And a uh, uh, little known fact, uh, it's, it just got released today, but uh, Ray here is a finalist for the ILTA Lifetime Achievement Award uh, for legal technology. Uh, congratulations, Ray. I hope that comes through. It should. Thanks. Exciting. Stiff competition and uh, both of my uh, uh, colleagues and old friends uh, uh, on there um, deserve it too. They're, they're both Judy and Alvin are wonderful folks. Uh, absolutely, right? And so, like you mentioned, uh, friends and colleagues, um, if it's okay, as we're getting into this conversation, Ray, um, I, I would, one of the most unique things uh, about connecting with you and really following your leadership uh, is, is really the depth of experience that you bring to the table and, and the different organizations you've worked in. And, and I would say worked in very successfully. And I was hoping you could spend just a couple minutes talking about your background and just kind of what brought you to where you are today in legal tech. Sure. Sure. Um, I feel extremely fortunate. First of all, hey, thanks for uh, jumping on the call here. It's always good to see your smiling face, of course. Um, uh, I feel very fortunate uh, being in this business. And uh, of course, uh, you know, did we only know, of course, during here COVID, you know, it's nice to be a software player, obviously, right? Uh, but I've been fortunate over my um, career. You know, so I started out, you know, of course, I won't get into grade school and my favorites, of course, you know, and what I did, but uh, yeah, I started out in Northern California, uh, kind of from a simple upbringing. Um, I'm actually a high school dropout. I, I don't tell everybody that, um, but, um, you know, did um, back then, yeah, you did, did just worked in the lumber mill or drove truck or fished. You did the normal stuff. And I, I got this inkling for uh, computers weren't around. Uh, for electronics. Um, so um, I married a wonderful woman um, in the uh, mid 80s and um, went to a, a, a um, school in Santa Rosa for um, electronic circuit design actually. And uh, of course, Silicon Valley area there um, and uh, was, uh, you know, computers were just beginning to start. It was so exciting. And so I helped the school set up the first computer lab, right? And I became kind of an expert at that. It was easy to become an expert when you only have three applications, software applications for the market. But um, anyway, transitioned, you know, into more of the computer area and um, got hired by Equitrack um, uh, at the time, the world's largest cost recovery company. Um, mm -hmm. And I was a technician for them, implementing and installing their systems. And really, um, it's kind of exciting. I tell people, and even my kids as they're growing up, it's good to have a good foundation of how computers work, uh, what they do and don't do, and, and even building from a base level. We don't do that anymore. We go to Best Buy and we buy a computer. Right. Right. We, we don't build computers, right? Uh, but uh, it really helps form a lot of things, understand more. But um, Equitrack was just a fantastic company, high growth at the time. And um, I uh, got offered a um, ability to do a startup with a gentleman that started an outsourcing company back in the day when Charles P. Young and uh, Ameriscribe um, um, uh, merged with Pitney Bowes or Pitney Bowes bought them. Uh, there was a lot of uh, folks that were um, on the market, you might say, from one of the other companies. So we started a company called Imagineer. Um, we um, Phoenix based and I had a lot of extra contracts, a lot of firms that I supported. So I had a lot of friendlies in there. I found real quick going from a technical role. Everybody loved to see me um, to business development. I, I was welcome, but it was different. I'm yeah. selling stuff. So that was a, the, the change of my um, you're looking at things differently. But that, that really launched that kind of the entrepreneurship of understanding business de development, pipelineology, um, you know, profit loss, revenue, just supporting the day to day cash flow of the company. Um, and we, we were after three years, we were successful. We closed the largest firm in the um, in the um, southwest, Snell and Wilmer. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Bound, a large financial printing company, was looking to get into outsourcing. 
you know, they said, hey, we, we bring a, uh, the largest law firms and companies together and investment banks to close a deal and do an IPO in our, in our um, environment. So why not have staff and people to go work in their firms, right? Um, so BBS, um, we formed BBS after the acquisition of my company in 97. Uh, we bought a division at Desi, R.R. Donnelly, and became a $250 million outsourcing company. I was chief technology officer for the Bound Business Solution division at the time. And, you know, young in my career, really um, quickly learned how to navigate a corporate environment, public company. Mm. Oh, my goodness, a, a, a different way of doing business. Um, but it, it really launched my career in understanding, um, you know, large firms. Amla was really our business. Um, I spent months and months at uh, B of A Securities and Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley designing workflow systems. That was really fun there, you know, um, kind of living on Wall Street for a while doing that uh, in and out. So it's kind of exciting in that front. But um, they uh, made some changes um, in there, moved my position to New York City. I was living in Chicago at the time, and I said, you know, I'm sorry, I want to get back to Phoenix. That's where my family is. I'm not moving further away from them, right? <laughs> yeah, we all love Phoenix. Right. So so long story short, um, I was uh, I had a good severance, and I'm like, okay, do I go work for someone or start my own company? And, and I just started to see, um, in all the copiers we moved to law firms, the ability, um, the screens in the copiers were getting bigger. Mm -hmm. well, from Equifract days, you know, we charged three thousand dollars for a hardware terminal device that sat next to the copier to enter your client code. And right. uh, so you know, the ideas came around, and I started uh, NQ, grabbed some really strong talent um, uh, in, in in the business to join me. Um, got funding and um, really um, uh, uh, converted the hardware market to a software-centric uh, market um, yep. with uh, cost recovery and scanning solutions and um, secured for cat patents, which is, you know, really, really cool. The the big companies, Nuance and, and Xerox and others, license my patents today, which is, mm -hmm. is kind of cool uh, from a pride thing, right? Well, uh, absolutely. Accomplishments. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, that kind of launched me further into, deeper into legal. Amla was a big market and uh, sold the company and, um, uh, let's see, uh, when was that? 2008-ish um, to um, Recon out of Australia. Uh, they owned Bill back and it was a really good fit. Mm -hmm. And I decided, you know, a lot of work for six years. <laughs> um, I decided to um, go um, pursue something else and thinking about starting another company actually. And um, uh, so at the time, the owners of World Software said, hey, we're looking at retiring. Uh, we think he'd be a great fit. I knew their their um, um, family real well, and uh, brought me aboard. It's been 12 years, and and I think we've redefined some of the stuff we do at World Docs. And what a great company! I, I am so extremely fortunate uh, to be part of uh, World Software. Absolutely. Well, well, thanks for for that timeline, and and, and I think that explains so much too of, of really the experience and the and I would say confidence too that you bring to the table. Um, I want to dote on on you and World Docs for for a little bit here. Just say, you know, we work with a lot of different legal technology vendors. Um, many of them good, uh, of course, but World Docs really shines. And 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 one of the reasons why World Docs shines is that it's a confident company that that knows who their clients are, serves their clients incredibly well, and and doesn't need to pursue every trend out there, right? But instead makes a very wise decision as to, hey, we're going to invest money here, invest money there. Um, and you guys have been great. You're a very profitable company, too. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say that too much, but, uh, you know, these, these are things I track. I want to make sure our vendors are, you know, that we work with are going to be around for a long time. And, and you guys are, are one of the easiest recommendations for us to make in terms of document management uh, and, and just software in general, because we always have good results with World Docs. And I think that goes a long ways. And obviously, we have a lot of people who invested a ton of time on your team, uh, a nice, long tenured team as well, which is, is relatively unique in technology. But uh, I want to give you a little credit because I think a lot of the confidence in World Docs comes from your confidence, Ray. You've seen a lot, you've bought and sold other companies, you've built them up, uh, and you know that, uh, hey, just ease up a little bit, everybody, right? We got a good product, we're strategic, we're moving forward on what really counts. And that's really refreshing to work with uh, and, and is, is quite uh, you know inspiring for us as well. The marathon, not the sprint. Absolutely, absolutely, right. So so speaking of World Docs, um, tell me a little bit about, just in your, in your your words, you know, not so much down in the detail of, 
what is document management. We get that if we're on this this uh, you know webinar right now. Um, but in your ter in your words, you know, what are the strengths and unique advantages of World Docs? Sure. Well, thanks, Aaron. You, you said a lot of kind words and very accurate statements about who we are. Uh, so, you know, World Docs has always been. Um, I guess a, a client centered company and oh my goodness that turns over word used you know client centric client focused you know we all try to be but man deep down in our DNA and my team's DNA I say you, know, you talk about 10 year staff um, three of my um, um, uh, directors high level people that manage the organization been here 32 years yeah uh, Includes the software lead and, and uh, uh, support tech lead and um, and then um, our uh, accounting administration, and so, so you start with that um, and then um, you know break that down to others uh, that have been here a decade or twenty years, right? Um, so I'm, I'm the baby of the bunch here. You might say at twelve <laughs> years, but so so good good team, uh, good DNA as far as um, what we'd like to do. And the owners it starts with you know uh, Tom and Christina. Burke are the primary owners of the company. Yeah. Uh, Fred Grossman is the founder of the company and also a co-owner. Um, and it starts with their, their um, caring. So from, from one standpoint, understanding we can't be everything to everybody. Uh, we want to make a profit. We're not a for loss organization. Right. Uh, you know, so we want to make sure we always stay in business. And through the last 30 years, through ups and downs, COVID or 911 or whatever, we've been a stable company. Um, and uh, you know, one foot after the next. Um, so that's that's important um, to look at the actual um, livelihood and the strength of the company from that end because we we can sustain a lot. Um, and then two is the secondary, the, the caring of um, our for our employees. We we truly do care about them, their family to us, and and from the owners on down through me. Um, and, um, and and then we pass that on to the clients, our customers. Um, typically at World Software are the, um, let's call it two to 50 is my absolute sweet spot. Two to 150 would be my range that I take on and support. We certainly have clients up to 800,000 users and the larger ones that have, we've gotten small and the big scale. So our software will support more. We really run in at that level to huge competitors, which has um, much more of a spend than us, a team uh, uh, buying companies to do AI, as you mentioned, you know, a, a little bit of everything, the stronger competition in that market. And we just, you know, said, wow, with, with 50,000 firms under 50, um, yeah. just really make sure we serve them um, and the best way we can. Uh, and the best way we can is, is um, a really the best value proposition, an affordable software, uh, whether it's SaaS or a cloud or on-premise, so, um, uh, so, uh, maintenance that is bar none the best in the industry. We take care of your problems. And I got to say with uh, over 6,000 customers, um, for me not to get too many hate emails every year, you know, I, I can't even count on the hand how many customers I have to deal with because something's undone. We take care of the problems the best we can. And, yeah. and we're, we're maybe not the biggest development team out there, but we're very consistent with product updates and very innovative in that in that approach. And I would say I, too, if I took in millions of PE money, yeah, I could do whatever. But there's a cost to that. There's a sacrifice to that. You're oftentimes driven. Um, as I know, um, by the investors and profitability, what you need. Uh, we are very much not driven. We're driven by what the customer needs and, and what we need to do to produce a good product. So, so that's kind of our, our DNA and our, and our makeup. Uh, we believe in, you know, uh, not only supporting the customer good, but continually providing um, awesome software updates and appropriate updates, um, you know, that the client can find useful. So Absolutely. That's kind of a little bit yeah. of overview. Well, well said there. Um, and so speaking of, of being client focused and, and you mentioned, you know, COVID as well, that's that's top of everybody's radar right now. What are some of the ways that um, you feel World Docs has been, you know, incredibly relevant to clients during this this COVID pandemic? Sure. Uh, talk a little bit about what I hear from clients uh, um, throughout these last half a dozen months and maybe what we have done. Uh, so first of all, you know, our I'll, I'll, I'll reuse a statement from my good friend Mark um, with a firm here in Phoenix. Uh, what he said to me is, uh, you know, you're one of the critical pieces of software that has helped us work remote. Um, and uh, we've never, our firm never missed a beat. And mm. I, I just love that, you know, and, and I think many of our firms, while, while um, some will have you believe if you're not cloud, you're 
you're totally toast and you know you got to be cloud and, and I, i'm a proponent cloud for certain things absolutely right um but many of our clients 99 percent of them um and, you know are on premise um and they have always been able to access their solutions either um, through our web mobile product um through our enterprise product or simply RDPing into their desktops and accessing it um more of our more advanced clients many hundreds of them i don't know if it's in the thousands yet are um have their environments hosted in a third-party data center so they are cloud but they're cloud with every product they have so their tabs is in there and their road docs is in there so they literally never missed a beat they already peed in from their home now like they do the office um so so i would say um you know the last months is this probably most of you guys have been doing our resellers and others um, have been getting clients working remotely like i can't print now i have a home printer and in in and, and, uh, different things like that so um you know it's it's a testament to how our software you know our maintenance continues to grow strong so our, our customers still appreciate and love what we what we do and i think even more important now uh a document management um where you can't print something and go hand to attorney everything is electronic and must stay electronic and version controls are are um, so important now right version control and, and, and uh, auditing documents um so i think that's you know that's one aspect of uh, that's really allowed us to hit um, our cloud in um, uptake is increased significantly as you know we're we're not exactly like other people do a cloud we have a very unique way but very effective way of pushing world docs back to our customers that that is true cloud as any cloud will get um and that has ticked up quite a bit um, but um, I still say there there are times for the cloud and, and times you don't want the cloud. And some of our doc, document intensive law firms, most of them are, but some uh, more than um, others, they appreciate that on-premise server, while maybe not as safe as the cloud, you could argue either way, um, they appreciate that quick and fast access and that um, the usability of the GX4 interface. Um, so, so, you know, we, we have um, doubled down on, on that there. So, so things go, gone well there, during there. Of course, we were all worried March and April. What's going to happen? How are firms going to work? And they've been they've been working well. And they too are looking at why do we need an office? <laughs> you know, what? We're, we're working pretty good like this. And I would imagine across the board. I mean, we've been busy still, um, and numbers are still good. But across the board, we've all slowed down a little bit, and we're all redefining how we work. So yeah. when this hit, and we we kind of thought kind of into April, I thought wow this this ain't going away right away here right right um and it's going to take months if not a year or two as we're now all seeing here if we want to be realistic um we uh um kind of the development team and and i um you know of course i lead that as president but i'm, I'm more involved as you know i like creating solutions and mapping them out and dreaming up what we can do uh, we really uh doubled and tripled down on things that can help today i mm think -hmm. <laughs> refocused our efforts to some of our broader goals um to to how we can help immediately so one of them is um, um pushing out more features and um on the new web product which you're aware of the web web 3 to web 3 1. Uh, we were under the design of redesigning that whole thing in react it's, that was about five times faster than the original version and um we we're kind of buttoning that up so we real quickly uh, applied more resources and finished that up um, and continually adding things to that as only World Docs customers will understand, but, but bookmarks, favorites, uh, adding to projects, creating your project files on the fly from the web client, adding the email engine so now you can save your Outlook email in through the web client, not needing the heavy desktop. Um, and, and then that strategic decision late last year to give that product, the entire web access product to any GX4 user, I think was strategic and it served us well through COVID because now you can access World Docs um, really through a web interface anywhere you want. Yeah. So, and so that uh, too that uh, hey, you guys did that before the pandemic hit as well. And so you know, obviously there's there's trends that way, but um, you guys were looking forward. Um, and and I, I know that a lot of companies and I can't even knock it. There's a lot of discounts and hey, we'll give you something free to get you over here. But uh, you guys really have been customer um, centric and you made that decision before pan the pandemic hit. And I uh, just want to acknowledge that. I also want to say, you know, it was very interesting when, when um, everybody went into quarantine and we were looking at our client base, you know, wondering what was going to happen. Um, we we're going to gain clients, we we're going to lose clients. It almost, almost felt like a 50-50, you know, what was going to go down with it. 
And and what we found was was the normal transition. If somebody could, you first had to work remote, right? It wasn't so much a question of cloud or this, just, hey, how do I get access? And so the vast majority of our clients uh, and law firms, as I understand them across the board, really kind of slotted into a remote desktop concept, okay? And, and, and that got it done. Um, and, and a lot of them are still in that vein right now. Hey, I just log in on a remote desktop back to the office. I'm happy, I'm using all my, my desktop apps there. We're good to go. Um, but there's an interesting conversation that's happening now where we are, you know, three months, four months, come on, five months into this year soon enough, right? And it's not changing. And all of a sudden, you know, people find out, hey, we're going to do virtual learning for, oh, the entire fall semester and maybe the spring semester. And that means I'm at home with my kids on top of everything else. It's a really interesting dynamic. And, and all of a sudden, People's mentalities, I believe, they're changing from saying, hey, how do we do two months of this to saying, wait a minute, how do we actually get good at this at this point? Or at least how do we get good enough to continue to serve our clients and not lose clients, right? And so we've seen a lot of interest uh, and uptick in the World Docs web product. Uh, that's a fantastic add-on. Somebody starts with the base version of World Docs. Um, they love it. They're using it in their, their, their office and they say, hey, how do I bring this all the way down to my home computer? How do I quit streaming you know, over the internet? How am I not subject to internet speed at all time? And so it was a wise choice. I think it's playing out well. I think there's a tremendous amount of interest on deck, uh, but still we really have to instruct clients as to what the options are as, as it's still not kind of quite readily available for everybody to understand, hey, World Docs will come all the way down you know, to your laptop, your iPad, the whole bit. So, Really good stuff there. Well, speaking of, you know, continuing the, the conversation of, of, of COVID here and, and the changes that are all happening, um, being an industry veteran, you know, one of the things that I'm looking at here is not so much what do the next three months look like, but, you know, what do the next three to five years look like? Um, and everybody loved to throw around the term of the new normal. What does that mean? We really don't know what the new normal is quite yet. Um, it's never quite as extreme as we think it's going to be. However, we did kind of open Pandora's box um, with all of a sudden mandating work from home. And a lot of clients said, hey, we can't support that. There's security concerns. We, and all of a sudden, oh, we have to. And so there was a lot of myths that were debunked, so to say, uh, and the work from home concept. And you can do it. Maybe it's not preferable for you, but we have to maintain it. So I was interested to see, as you look down the, you know, down the road here, what do you think some of the lasting changes from this pandemic will be, you know, as applied to legal technology or technology in general? Sure, I, I think a, a continued spin and perfection of remote, um, uh, more flexible remote solutions, right? I, I think that's 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 standard status quo. Um, yeah. However, you access your data and your applications, and and as you mentioned, it's education is what it's all about. It's it's. A lot of different ways to do it. You know, what, what is the best way for you and for your firm? I think we're going to see in the short term, um, a year, think about it, ABA Tech Show in April just announced they went virtual. That's next April. Yeah. Uh, 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 ILTA next August. Are we really going to be um, the same ILTA? I don't know. It will be around, obviously, but a virtual component, is, as Joy, the CEO, says, a uh, virtual component will probably be always a part of the future ILTAs. Um, so we, we wonder if that's going to be there. And I, I think we have all next year, really, of similar environment. Um, and I think so. I think, number one, short term, I, I tell my colleagues, um, uh, value is going to be extremely important. So and I, and I hear this from other CEOs. So these firms, many have um, um, have uh, foregone 10, 15, 20 percent partner profits. We read about that in the news. So they've, they've taken a little hit. They're furloughing or laying off certain admin staff, depending on the size of your firm. Um, I honestly gonna, uh, believe that that as opposed to huge buying, uh, maybe cloud buying or whatever, um, I think that's the mentality for the next 18 months is going to be getting the profits back up and yeah. looking for value in whatever solution you have, getting the most out of every solution. Oh, we have World Docs. We've already bought it. It, it works good. It works great. We love it. Now, how do we, 
how do we use it to share and collaborate better? And that, you know, of course, I'll have to throw in a sales pitch. We've recently or, or soon to release our Teams integration, Microsoft Teams. So that's another thing we've we've since the pandemic. I said, okay, triple down. I want this done in two months, right? And mm -hmm. and now you can share and collaborate through World Docs into Microsoft Teams and check it in, check it out, and keep track of versions. So th those are just little examples of that was a long-term thing that we are going to do as a complimentary thing for our customers that we've doubled down on and said, let's get that out and let's very quickly move on to the next step so we can truly produce value for that customer who already selfishly, I want new customers, but but I want to keep the customers happy and really enjoying World Docs. And that's always, as as we mentioned earlier, it's our DNA. So yeah. I think that getting value, driving value from your software will be the next 18 months, definitely. And longer term, um, I really think um, I, I really think that we're going to see firms now more accessible. Law firms have always not wanted remote. They've been against remote uh, work w within reason. New associates come aboard. How do you, secretary paralegal, how do you work remote? That's not even the attorney wants to walk out and hand them papers. It's just in their DNA. Uh, associates start, you need to be around other um, um, attorneys and you need to learn. So, yeah. so they've been against that. And now I'm hearing people are saying, why do we have that big office? So I think um, even my staff, how do I, how do I tell some of my help desk engineers that are brilliant. They 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 do more calls now than they do when they're in the office. I yeah. believe right? yeah. that have a two hour round trip commute to worker. Uh, how do I tell them now? Oh, come to the office because you're more productive. You know, maybe maybe every other Friday comes and we can have a team meeting. So I think it's going to change the, the, our old school perception. Even yeah. myself, I like my team here where I can put my hands around them and we can meet and whiteboard things. Um, it's going to change that perception of firms, and I think that's going to be one of the lasting effects. Remote remote work, um, you know, I, I would like to get all of us back in the office soon, but I think it's going to be years before that actually happened. They, they said the other day that even with the vaccines that they're working on, um, we will still need to social distance, wear a mask into the next few years until that becomes effective and stuff. So, yeah. so really, I think the remote work aspect and then doubling down on value for the products you have is is my take on what's going to happen in the next 36 months as opposed to knit new solutions that swap out your existing solution that's working pretty good right that's a that's a that's a great insight uh and, and obviously companies have to stay healthy you don't buy technology when you're you know making enough money to pay the bills for your own family if you're a partner so to say right uh, and, and that's a good sign. I mean, economies need healthy businesses first and foremost, and healthy businesses invest in, in technology and change, right? Um, and so, well, let me let me say this here. You mentioned Teams. Um, I love Teams. I think that the transition to Microsoft Teams is is maybe one of the the greatest like changes on the technology front that's happened over the last six months, um, let alone a year here. And, and I I think it just boy, the amount of things that are to come because of it are going to be immense. Um, I, I read a stat that said Slack uh, and Teams uh, being competing platforms, chat, collaboration, kind of like business focused, you know, messaging and text messaging. Both of them were at about 12 million to 14 million users right about February, daily active users, about so about 14 million daily active users um, about in February of this year. Um, fast forward three months, and that number increased by about a million for Slack, but it went all the way to 75 million daily active users for Teams, right? And this stat- uh, Law firms are office users, yeah. and they inherently subscribe to 365, most of them, they right. get Teams for free. It's part of the DNA. Office right. document, DocX documents, you can multi-edit in Teams. It puts a calendar entry you can click on, yeah. And so this stat was from May. And I haven't even seen the latest, but there, there is a, a just there's been a, a a sea change, so to say, a focus on on Teams as really the collaboration tool of business nowadays. And I'm really interested to see how this enables companies to you know a work remotely, but b to to, to really work remotely securely to integrate better with products like World Docs, um, to to really move their firms not i would say this not um to just one cloud application or to a server in the cloud 
but really become solutions tied together in the cloud. I think the desktop of the future is going to be Microsoft 365. We won't think about it as, hey, I log into my Windows desktop. Really, we'll just log into a browser and really everything is connected at that point. Yeah. And I think that Teams is enabling that um, in a more tangible way than really any other application because it draw it pulls so many disparate pieces together. So I was gonna say, um, any insights on kind of that Teams integration? How does that, you know, benefit a firm? Is there, is there any, any sizzle sauce on that? Yeah, so we, we um, as you know, uh, from a couple of years ago, Aaron, I was a big 365 fan. Teams were very immature, very uh, in the starting phase, and our top track was more around SharePoint sites and OneDrive than Teams, but a fast forward, Teams is now the platform. Uh, so I've been bullish on it all along. Um, so two, two things. So I've been working with firms that are, were using Teams and adopted it early. And I went to this one firm and, and they love teams um, and every they, they let each practice group set up their own teams. And I was sitting there looking at their screen and here's hundreds of teams, Kathy's Acme Corporation team, <laughs> you know, and they're all randomly named and I'm like, OK, you've been using this for a few months here. How many new cases do you get a month? Oh, about 100, you know, um, OK, times 100 attorneys. And, and so what are you going to do when you have 2000 teams, 4000 teams? And, so that kind of gave us the idea uh, and, and others are doing it too. You know, I won't take total credit for it, but it, it gave us the idea that we need to manage the team naming structure uh, a lot like accounting system made a management system matter based client matter based structure. So sure. um, from the world docs interface, um, you literally create the team from there, which takes the client matter description and instantiates the team with other things um, right there in the interface. So all teams are now named properly, like you see them in your DMS or your accounting system. You can search for a client number, you can search for a client name. So, so it allows the consistency and allows you to create one team around that name. Um, with the ability, of course, now to create multiple channels and have various security in those channels. And then, of course, uh, uh, the tricky part is the check in, check out and collaboration of documents, marking the documents. Aaron has this checked out to Teams, you yeah. know, and, and where that's at. So, um, you know, it, it really just adds tremendous value and organization to Teams that there wasn't there before. Yeah. I just copy, you can copy files to any team share, but organizing that so that the firms are comfortable with it is, is another aspect we deeply wanted, um, you know, into our team's interface. And, you know, it's, it's, we're giving this integration for free, you know, part of the world docs value and teams is no charge. So it's kind of a win-win. Yeah. Well, it, and, and in line with that too, it was, it was interesting back in March when, when we, everybody's trying to sell as much product as they can and what's going to happen you know and everything was real dicey and and of course if hindsight is 2020 but you look back and at the end of march nobody's going to sell anything basically <laughs> right it, it, was, it was the biggest bear market ever you know especially yeah. in terms of technology right um and we moved when i finally could quit fighting against that and just kind of slowed down for a second and said hmm how can i be relevant i, I switched from pursuing direct sales and trying to push a product and say, hey, how do I add value to our existing client base? And that was one of the best things we did. We did make some money out of it, um, which is great. We need to do that, obviously. But we also went back and reconnected with so many clients that that maybe we were too busy for, um, or or maybe we just hadn't been as, as, as passionate about connecting with. We didn't need to connect. And, and this yeah. kind of created this space to find out, you know, what is truly of value for firms. Um, and so that was a really, really great time to go back. Um, I'm happy to say we didn't lose any clients uh, during the COVID transition. That was remarkable for us. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with going back and just trying to add value, not trying to eke out one more deal, but but adding value. So I see that same thing in World Docs. There's a lot of alignment there. Um, I, I'd love to hear that. So, yeah. Nurturing the client base is absolutely, I've always wanted to see our resellers who has a touch point better nurture our customers. And, and we often hear from customers say, oh, we haven't heard from our bar after they sold us for a year or two, because we've had so much new business. Everything's focused on net new. So our our revenues are, are the same. We're, we're still doing business, but refocusing for even a short time on our customer base to get them more healthy, I, I think it's good business all the way around, as you, as you mentioned. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, hey, as we wrap this up, I can't help but ask, the, the people wanna know what's on deck. 
do you mind giving a little little sneak peek or something about GX5? Or I don't want to push you too hard, but uh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, sure. Uh, we are um, so along with these new things we're creating, I mentioned that we're con uh, you know, throughout this year, next we're going to continue to create small value items that we're going to push out, right. not not major releases, and they will be beneficial for the clients today. Yeah. Uh, that's really important to me, especially in this day and age. Right. So we have, of course, our core team. Um, working on um, it, it will be the World Docs 15 product line. Yeah. Uh, kind of dropping the GX uh, now, so it'd be the World Docs 15 product line. And I guess um, I, I'll, I'll give you stuff that is already done, and maybe mention what we're working on. Uh, two, I want to do light on what we're working on because it could change. Uh, so we've already um, we've had a pretty legacy older search engine. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that may still be in use for small clients for years to come, uh, but we've completely um, swapped out our core engine for solar, which mm -hmm. is one of the most robust, uh, you know, open source source uh, search engines in, in the world, right? Okay. Facebook, Instagram, et cetera, um, uh, uses that. So we have been in-house in some of our bars using that as a core search engine instead of the old ISIS for many years. That's really, really important. That was the first time we've, we've really gutted the back end. And now this thing is, is ability to scale a lot more than we could before. I want more, as you know, my eccentric email idea of having more contact-based emails flowing through the system, more data uh, pulled up around that. Uh, whether you call it AI or just better looking into emails, um, sure. not technical term, uh, this will allow us to process so much more than we did before. So I'm really excited about that. That will be um, tested throughout this year at certain clients, but, but really part of the key World Docs 15 uh, product um, without giving everything away. Um, yeah. We have uh, completely redesigned the interface. So stay tuned for a more um, 365 looking ribbon bar interface in the new product. It will be uh, extremely pleasing and modern. Um, and uh, sometimes we get hit with, well, World Docs doesn't look modern. Well, what do you want us to make it look like? Well, I guess you. You, you match what Microsoft is producing. It's kind of hard to argue that's not the most modern. Uh, I'll have a few twists to it, of course. And then we're, um, of course, uh, uh, here again, a little more vague. Um, the tertiary or third option we're really looking around for the World Docs 15 um, is the way in which the core World Docs product accesses data. Yeah. So um, I won't get into the details other than it will be an entirely new way um, and it will be more modern in the way that other folks are doing it. And it will allow you to have um, a World Docs agnostic data set. We, we've always thought this was uh, myself and, and Fred, the, the key designer of the product and, and co-founder. Um, uh, this would be ultimate, ultimate down the road, but we've never just sat down and said we're going to do this. And this will allow you to, to take your World Docs data set and put it in Rackspace, Azure, your server, your server in the cloud, your friend server um, and and have um, us access that data um, with very ease of access. So so just like it was sitting there on your server or behind your firewall. So that's kind of one of our overarching big goals that we're working on now. A lot of work. It's it's really World X 15 will be um, the, the, the you know, I guess from when we converted in the 80s to DOS to Windows, this will be the next gutting of World Docs architecturally. And, and, and I'm very excited about that. And, and I'm hoping early next year, mid next year, um, we can have that out. Um, uh, of course, we're also doing a, dozens of little things, uh, improving um, workspaces. You know, I, I, we already have in our office and house, we haven't shown this to public yet, but a complete redesign of how projects are worked and how you create um, projects um, and the ability to utilize categories all the way up to a cabinet level um, and expand that feature. So really taking the features that our clients love, but say, whoa, you stopped short and, and really you know, adding a lot of uh, value and, and uh, finishing out those features too, which, which is uh, you know, part of course where we should be doing. So really excited about the new interface. Again, you know, as you mentioned, uh, you know, I mean, hey, you know, this is the marathon, right? Not a sprint. So it will be out um, as soon as we have these features into it and comfortable. Meanwhile, we'll continue to give value to our customers. Um, and I think, uh, you know, hey, we'll we'll have a jump on a call next uh, here in January, and I should be able to uh, a demo kind of what I'm talking about. It should be. I, I'm hoping it's really exciting. I'm, I'm pumped up about it. And, and yeah. so.
Well, that sounds great. And I thank you for sharing a few details on that front. Uh, I know understanding the technical back end of World Docs, the significance of that change. And, and really, I, I, I love that here, again, listening to clients, responding to, to true value points from clients, not just talking points, but actually how clients you know, get work done and, and, and really creating a system that doesn't you know, mandate just one cloud strategy, but says, hey, how do you remain autonomous with your law firm's data? What servers do you want to use? Hey, you can use World Docs on any of those. I, I, I love the freedom um, in terms of what solutions you can use. It, again, very, very uh, attorney solution focused. How do we help you be a better lawyer? You guys understand law firms, understand lawyers, and, and it's clear. Again, uh, Ray, it's, it's always a pleasure. Um, uh, we hope to actually to connect again in January. That'd be great to get a little bit of a demonstration, right? Uh, but in the meantime, you know, thanks for your time. We'll we'll keep broadcasting to our clients um, those incremental improvements and and keep the flow going. Love to meet with you again. And uh, also, once again, congratulations on the the nomination for the Lifetime Achievement Award. That's terrific. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, be safe and be good. All right. Thank you, Ray. Bye bye.